Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are small planets made mostly of rock and iron. Farther out, where it's colder, are the giant planets made mostly of gas. But comets originate from a great cloud beyond the planets, almost halfway to the nearest star. Occasionally, one falls in, accelerated by the sun's gravity. Because it's made mostly of ice, a comet begins to evaporate as it approaches the sun. The vapor is blown back by the solar wind, forming the cometary tail. Then it's flung back into outer darkness, its orbit so large that it will not return for millions of years. These are the long period comets, and for everyone plunging close enough to the sun to be discovered, there may be a billion others slowly drifting beyond Pluto's orbit. Very rarely, a long period comet is captured in the inner solar system, becoming a short period comet. It passes near a major planet like Saturn. The planet provides a small gravitational tug, enough to deflect it into a much smaller orbit. Although few comets are captured this way, those that are become well known because they all return in relatively short intervals. Once trapped in the inner solar system, among the planets, the chances of another near collision are increased. Here, a second encounter with Saturn further reduces the comet's orbital period to decades. A comet may take 10,000 years between close planetary encounters, but in this computer study, we've sped things up. A third encounter, this time with Jupiter, further reduces the comet's orbital period. Now, the comet must approach the sun and grow a tail every few years. Since the dust and gas in the tail are lost forever to space, the comet must slowly be eroding. Pieces of it break off. Sometimes, as we've seen, they even strike the Earth. In a few thousand years, if a short period comet hasn't hit a planet, it will have evaporated away almost entirely, leaving sand-sized fragments which become meteors and its core, which perhaps becomes an asteroid. Suppose I were a pretty typical comet, then what you would see would be a kind of a tumbling snowball, spending most of my time out here in the outer solar system. I'd be a kilometer across. I'd be living most of my days in the gloom beyond Saturn orbiting the sun. But about once every century, I would find myself careening inward, faster and faster, towards the inner solar system. By the time I would cross the orbit of Jupiter on my way to the orbit of Mars, I'd be heating up because I'd be getting closer to the sun. I'd be evaporating a little bit. And small pieces of dust and ice would be blown behind me by the solar wind, forming an incipient cometary tail. On the scale of such a solar system model, I, me, a cometary nucleus, would be smaller than a snowflake. Although, when fully developed, my tail would be longer than the spacing between the worlds.